for those who don't know, often I am commissioned to put together PCs. I'm not saying I'm some super great guy at it because putting together PCs are quite simple. And this is the Ryzen build. It was meant to be somewhat future-proof. And I know what you're going to say. You can't really future-proof computers. Well, that's true, kind of. It depends on who the hell's using the computer because the person who wants this computer has had the same Dell computer for 17 years. So at least this thing will last her a good, I don't know, at least till 2022 to 2024, since the AM4 platform is most likely going to be supported well in the 2020s, according to AMD. But the likelihood of her changing her CPU or anything is slim and next to none. But let's move on anyway. I tried to walk a weird line here. In the sense of I tried to skimp where I could and splurge where I could. I know, that doesn't make sense as a sentence. The case is a Aza Titan CSAZ 240 Black. I can honestly say that for the price of the case, it wasn't bad and it suited the needs that I specifically had for the case. It was made of steel and it also had the tempered glass panel, which I thought would be a nice touch. Since the person who ordered this has a very extravagant home, I felt they may as well have a PC that reflects the lifestyle. What I do like about this case is the rubber grommets on the thumb screws. And there's a bit of foam padding on the inside of the tempered glass. It's not exactly super, but it does keep from scratching and clanking noises when putting it on or taking it off. There's also thumb screws in the back, obviously, as most cases have integrated this into the norm, which is a good thing. I will say for wire management, there isn't enough room on the back panel at all. I mean, there's so little room, it isn't even funny, but to be expected, this case was only 50 bucks. It also comes with a drive bay. I don't know if people care about that. The person who's using it still uses discs, so that's there. There's also a glowing symbol for the Aza, I am probably got the name of it wrong, that plugs in with Molex. I hate Molex. I don't like Molex. I shouldn't say I hate it, I just don't like it. There isn't many things I hate in this world. But on the plus side, even though it's a cheap case, it does have a hidden PSU bay. You know, that little box at the bottom that hides all your wires for management. I also went with the MSI X370 Gaming Pro Carbon. I know, a Gaming Pro MOBO for someone who probably isn't going to be gaming or overclocking. But once again, this is meant to last a while. So, if there's a possibility that she ever felt it wasn't fast as she'd like it, I could swing over, hop on the computer, overclock the mofo, and move on with my day. It also supports cooling your M.2 device with the M.2 shield. But honest to God, between you and me, I hear these M.2 shields do not function very well and also tend to overheat your M.2 SSD. So. I don't trust this as far as I can fling it. But it looks nice, I give it that. Unlike Linus, I'm not gonna bullshit you about the shroud. It also supports 3.1 USB, amplifier gaming audio boost, you know, the usual. By the way, when putting together these cases, it would help to have this little tool right here, this circular thing to pop in these gold stands. I don't know what the hell they call these things. I never knew what they were called, I just know they hold up the MOBO, I've, I've got to figure that out one day. I just call them the gold things. Fuck you Gundam, you idiot! As you can see, this tiny tool goes right into place, simple use, pop in and twist away. Believe it or not, this is quite useful. I remember, you, I remember putting together computers without this and it was a bad idea. Very wobbly in the end if the computer is mailed anywhere and UPS doesn't take care of it. It's a whole mess. Get one if you can find one. Often some uh, companies like Cooler Master will give you one with their case. So keep that in mind with your next uh, case buy. If you get a really nice case, sometimes they supply that little tool for free. Pop in the MOBO in place. Nothing really special to see here. I mean, you know how it is. You screw it on down. Big, ugh. I was about to say big fucking whoop. I'm trying not to curse for this, but frankly, who am I kidding? I mean, really, who am I kidding? I'm not gonna all of a sudden become hardware Canucks and find the ability to just say what I mean without, oh crap, my noodles. I regret to inform you that my noodles are subpar. 
It's Velveeta Shells and Cheese. I got it for free. You'll find that a lot of my life deals with free stuff. Ugh. Ugh, God, that's the last time I do a job and somebody pays me in food. Ugh, Velveeta Shells and Cheese. Oh, it's not sitting in my tummy right. Oh, God, I feel like I lost a fight with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Now he did a split kick right in my gut. Oh, I'm gonna be pooping pellets later. I'm just gonna be dropping shit rocks. This is the worst computer tutorial ever. Now that you got your little spacers in place, it's time to do the good old fashioned screw in place. Nothing really special here. I mean, in all honesty, you get the spiel at this point. You screw in every hole. I know, it's rocket science here. I mean, a lot of console gamers will tell you it's real hard and it takes a lot of technical know-how to build a PC, but I'm here to tell you, it really doesn't. In fact, I could sit here and shoot the shit with you while this plays. In fact, I could do that with you in person if you came to my house. Or if you had like your own uh, little computer shop. I should get a job at a computer shop. Putting together computers and crap like that and fixing it and getting paid absorbent amounts of money. Just install an OS on a computer for someone. Do you work for the Geek Squad? Yes, I do, Becky. I need Windows 10 on this and I can't figure it out. I'm like, all right, Becky. Now steal your phone number from the logs. And I'll call you late at night and tell you that your hair smells like ginger snaps. What did you say? Nothing. And here it is, the Ryzen CPU. This is the 1600, not the 1600X or anything. I bought this right before AMD, in all their infinite wisdom, decided to finally sell the Wraith Cooler RGB separately. But it wasn't really any major loss because they want $59 for the Wraith Cooler. So they could shove it up their ass. Yeah, I said it. I'm gonna pay $59 for that fucking cooler when you can get like, what is it, a 12, 20 Evo or 212 Evo and it cools better than that? Like, come on, guys. And in all honesty, the AMD coolers are just modified AM3 Plus coolers. And I will show you right now because they're so closely matched in design, it's staggering. I think they added some copper plating in all honesty. But other than that, I'm not seeing any super duper wow major mind blowing difference here. Hell, even down to the CPU plastic things that hold the CPU in place, it's the same exact thing. There's a lot of just re engineering here as far as the cooling goes. And you think like the RGB one's gonna be that much different? Not $59 different. You can get like what? The H60 from Corsair for 60 bucks? Oh, this is the part of the video where I start casting black magic spells into the case like Jimmy Page before me. Please enjoy my magic. The last time I did a video like this, I was so serious that it wasn't even funny. It was sad. I don't even know why I took myself so serious. I guess it was at the time when I figured, if I keep being positive and having a clean image, it'll only be a matter of time before YouTube notices me. Ah, eh, screw this. Now we're putting in the CPU, and honestly, when it comes to computer building, this is probably the most delicate part in all honesty. And all you gotta do is pretty much line up the little triangle to the little triangle. It's not very hard. Just make sure you got it right. Because if you do screw it up, especially with the pin design of uh, AMD CPUs, yeah. You're gonna need like a lead pencil to fix the pins. By the way, this MOBO actually supports the old fan design of AM3+. Plus. So let's say you got like a 1600X or a 1700X or 1800, whatever the case may be. Let's say you got one that doesn't come with a cooler. If you happen to be upgrading your previous AMD rig, which was AM3+, Plus, you can use one of the older coolers. So that is actually pretty cool in my opinion. I forgot that, you know, a couple of motherboard manufacturers implemented this, which I think was actually quite nice of them and fairly thoughtful, considering most people are upgrading on a budget. And once you buy that RAM, the mobile, and the CPU, you've already burned a couple hundred dollars. And getting an extra cooler could really burn your broke ass. After you finish defeating those socialist pigs we call screws, your next challenge is going to be getting the AM4 cooler on the mobile. Now the back plate is going to be tricky to hold in place by yourself. I tried out masking tape. It didn't exactly go well in all honesty. And like a jackass, I totally forgot to turn on the camera to record me screwing it in place with one hand. Uh, yeah. Now, here's the trick of it. You get the 
case, you tilt it on its side and let gravity do the work for you. At this point, you're now capable of actually screwing the fan in place. But make sure that you've got it in an angle where it doesn't slip and smear thermal paste anywhere it shouldn't be. You don't need that happening. It'll ruin your day. And you don't want the screws themselves to drag across the motherboard and scratch it up. So it requires a great deal of patience while doing this and keeping it cool. Don't get frustrated or else you'll bite yourself in the ass. Now we're moving on to the delicious RAM. I know what you're thinking. You could have got cheaper DDR4 RAM. And you're right, I could have. I should have. But for the love of God, I wanted to touch the Trident Z RGB RAM. All right, all right, sue me. I just wanted the flashy RAM. All right, since I can't upgrade my computer, I'm gonna put the flashy RAM somewhere so I can put my oily little fingers all over it. All right, I'm like a guy who's finally touching an attractive woman and I've got her right where I want her. She's giving me full consent and I'm getting full on body lotion action right now with that. Wow, this has gone someplace that uh, I want you to forget everything you just heard. And don't you dare change your opinion of me, you bastard. Well, I'm popping the RAM in places exactly like GDDR3. Why did I say GDDR? Forgive me, I'm so used to saying that. Uh, popping the RAM in places just like DDR3 RAM. It's the same thing. You know, you get your thing in the right dim slots. Uh, for layman's terms, if you put, dim, you, like if you're using dim slot one, then you gotta use dim slot, slot three for the next stick of RAM. You got me? Next up is the PSU. I kind of regret getting the Corsair one. Not that I don't like Corsair because I use Corsair in so many of my builds, it's not even funny. But I kind of felt like, after looking a little bit more after I went through this, that the EVGA PSU was like 600 watts and it was the same price as the 450 modular. So it's kind of a fuck up. And on top of that, the sad thing is I ended up using every wire. so. Paying the extra for modular was pointless here. Completely pointless. Another gripe I have is the case right here. The weird thing is since it has these hard drive slots at the bottom that support 2.5 and what was it, 3.5? I forgot, well anyway, it supports SSDs and HDDs. And frankly, I didn't know that those were there when I bought it. So it really ate up a lot of the room I had for the wires and the PSU. It made things very cramped. As I said before, a disk drive. I know, a lot of people don't use them anymore, but this is for someone who still uses them, and I had to make a compromise. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have picked this case for the build if it was for someone who wasn't adamant about disk drives. So, yeah, sue me. Installing a disk drive is actually, you know, it's the same thing. It's all Legos, really, dude. It's Legos with screws. I can't think of any sort of advice I could give anyone as a first-time builder for this because it's so simple. You'll probably sit there and you'll hit yourself in the face like, I can't believe it was this easy this whole time. If you've ever worked on a car or a motorcycle, I'll tell you right now, this is way easier. By the way, don't pay any attention to the wires in the back. I am not doing wire management yet. Like, I was kind of going through what I wanted to do. And I made some changes. I didn't bother adding that in the video. This probably videos where people will specifically teach you how to do wire management. It's something I felt I didn't want to be another 30 or 40 minutes of video of me just sitting there and fiddling with wires. Go find some other socialist pig to watch. Uh, I apologize. I've been watching an Alex Jones folk song video and it's now in my system. I can't get it out. Forgive me. But so far, it's looking pretty legit. Nice, sweet, clean look very minimalist on the inside like personally for me i don't care if the wires look like shit in the back i mean i do put effort into wire management but my biggest thing is making sure the inside looks good to hell with the back no one can see it oh by the way the graphics card i'm using is a gtx 760 a two gigabyte model i got it right before the mining craze hit you can find these suckers for about well at the time you could get these for like 50 dollars, dude you get it for 50 dollars and it was probably kicking around just below a 1050 Ti in current day standings. Or actually it's kicking around a 1050, not the Ti. If you wanna be at the 1050 Ti level, you need like a 960 or a GTX 770. 
I had to skim somewhere so it was a graphics card. Now that all of that is done, we're moving on to testing the rig and making sure it works. And thank God it does. And that is all that matters. At this point, you can pretty much call it a wrap if you're building your first computer and you decide to watch some of my video on what the hell I did. You probably didn't learn much of anything because there isn't much to teach. It's so simplistic, it's not funny. If anything, I'm here to encourage you to take the dive and I'll let you know that it's simple. By the way, I'm adding in some, uh, I think they call this hardware porn or some shit. It's something big on Facebook where all the guys who get their computer parts, they peel it off slowly and show you. It's supposed to titillate you. Are your nipples hard? They probably aren't because you don't give a rat's ass about pulling film off of something. And I hear you. You're like me. You only get excited when there's hookers and blow or you're being shot at. The last time I felt alive, I almost crashed a motorcycle off a highway like 200 feet in the air, man. That was the last time I felt alive, brother. Or when I was like driving through the ghetto and then someone mistaked me for somebody else and then they started shooting. That was the other time I felt alive. Cause that's when you know you're about to die. Oh wow, this has nothing to do with computers. Okay, back to point. Uh, right here I'm installing Windows 10, obviously. I already installed it and I was running into issues. Now if you're running into issues with the AM4 platform with Ryzen 1600, 1700, 1800X, whatever the case may be, the issue you might have when booting up and running the computer and it just randomly blue screens or blacks out is because the version of Windows you installed on the computer was an older version of Windows that didn't support Ryzen. It's as simple as just getting yourself a newer install CD or creating a boot on a thumb disk, a thumb disk drive. And that is it. That's all she wrote, dude. And you're good to go. I think I've got it. Uh, AXMP, which is, I guess, AMD's version of XMP. It's the same fucking thing. And I switch it to Profile 2. Figure, why not see if it works? Even though I really want to kind of fiddle around with overclocking the RAM myself, but once again, this isn't my PC. And I have to resist the urge to mess with DDR4 because it's the first time I've gotten to use DDR4. Ah, uh, well, let's see if uh, this sort of auto shit works. For most instances, the RAM is underclocked for installing OSs, from what I understand when it comes to Ryzen. So once you're done, go in there, clock it back to what it belongs to, either use a profile or overclock it yourself, and then run a game to make sure that everything is on the up and up. The best way to know is to play a video game, because I was reading that there were people with similar issues and they didn't know it was completely fixed until they could play something without it crashing. After they did all the work, Ryzen was working fine, and they were like, oh great, it's fixed, and they play a video game and then it would go back to crashing. But in this instance, I seem to be fine. Everything's on the up and up. The computer's good to go. Thank you for your time. You know, I apologize if this is not up to par for what you expect. I shot this with a cell phone. I don't have that kind of money, believe me. Uh, you know the whole spiel. Can't actually give more of a shit than me. Rate, comment, subscribe if you so choose to. Thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't give a rat's ass. You know what I'm saying? And neither should you. In the sense of you're free to do as you choose, I'm not going to tell you to smash that like button like I'm some sort of douchebag running around the kitchen screaming at the top of my lungs pretending everything is so stoked when it's just another goddamn Tuesday. Adios, bichachos. He is the worst I've ever met. I'm going back to Paul's hardware.